Hopefully you've watched the previous two videos and you know that what we're talking about is balancing control and fluidity when painting in Photoshop. Well, let's take a break and look at Mario for a second. What you see here is Mario breaking the rules. Mario is trying to get across from one building to another and the way he does that is he throws his hat out and then he jumps off of the hat itself and uses it a bit like a springboard. Now, if what we were talking about was strict realism, obviously this doesn't work. But within the Mario universe, somehow we just kind of accept this. Generally, the game will introduce to you through a tutorial or some sort of teaching method everything that Mario is capable of doing. He can run, he can jump, and one of the things he can do is he can throw his hat and then he can jump on the hat. And my guess is you don't really bat an eyelid at this. It's just the rules of the game. So we come into Photoshop, especially when you're a beginner, we have baggage. We have expectations that digital painting is very much like traditional painting. Or even if you haven't done traditional painting, you kind of understand what it is. It's, you know, putting paint on a brush, which you then put on the canvas. But what I'd suggest is we have tools that are a lot more like Mario's hat than they are like a traditional paintbrush. As you've seen, I can paint a rock here. And so I can change its shape a little bit. And then I can lock the transparent pixels and now I'm painting inside of the shape of the rock I just painted. This is a Mario's hat moment. Sure, it has some relationship to the real world, as in if you've ever seen an airbrush painting made, you know that they lay down transparent film and they cut it out with an X-Acto knife and then they can paint inside of a stencil. So in that way, you're only painting inside of a defined area. But where it breaks from reality, is that I didn't have to put down that frisket film. I didn't have to get out my X-Acto knife. All I had to do is click this little button here. I'll click it again. And now I am not painting within a mask. Now I am free to paint and erase as much as I want. So this little toggle here is a bit of a mental leap. You have to understand that it's possible first. And that's kind of like in Mario going through the tutorial and kind of learning what Mario is capable of. So then you know the rules. I think the next crucial step is the fact that in Mario, you've got a really great controller, as in there's a few buttons, each one has a single purpose. And so at first you might struggle with the idea that how to throw the hat, how to jump on the hat. But after maybe an hour of playing, you don't even think about it, it's second nature. And that's where keyboard shortcuts come in for the digital painter. So for instance, one thing I do a lot is I'll make a new layer like this. I paint something, we'll say I paint like this, and then I convert it to be a clipping mask. So I make it a clipping mask. That little set of steps is something I do a thousand times a day. So what I do instead is actually use keyboard shortcuts for all of it. I'll make a new layer with a keyboard shortcut. I can paint and then I can turn it to be a clipping mask all without even thinking about it. It's become muscle memory because I've dedicated myself to learning those keyboard shortcuts. Now, this isn't just some abstract notion of it makes me faster. I think that's what a lot of people assume the keyboard shortcuts are good for. What I would argue is that keyboard shortcuts allow you to suspend your disbelief, to allow yourself to have those Mario moments without even thinking about it. Like when you play Mario for a while, at some point you just get good at using the hat and you stop thinking about the fact that it was ever weird in the first place. Well, if I can work in Photoshop in that way with no gap between making a mark, which is a lot like painting, but then quickly going into a set of steps that's really pretty unlike painting. What I've just done is I have redefined in my mind the rules of the game. I'm not thinking like a traditional painter anymore. I'm thinking like a digital painter. And I think you'll get there so much faster if you learn those keyboard shortcuts early. Because every time I stop from working on the creative thing to go hit a button or open a menu, now I've stopped thinking about the creative part. I'm not in the flow anymore. Instead, I'm thinking about technical process. But if you can master those keyboard shortcuts, you'll just start enacting on your creative impulses because all these interesting digital tools that we have available to us just become background noise. It's just like hitting the button to jump on your controller and jumping on that hat. So learn your keyboard shortcuts, see what's possible with digital painting, and I bet it'll totally change the way you paint.